afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is John Lenchowski. I'm uh, president of the Institute, and I would just like to welcome you all here. For those of you who are new to the Institute, we are an independent graduate school. We have five master's degree programs in international affairs, national security, intelligence, and strategic studies. Uh, one of them is a, a executive master's program, and we've just recently started our own doctoral program, which is recently approved by the accrediting and the uh, regulatory authorities. Uh, we are uh, honored to have a distinguished visitor today from uh, our newest ally, and uh, I wanted to give the honor of introducing him to an old friend of the Institute and a personal friend of mine, Ambassador and former Foreign Minister of Croatia, uh, Miomir Zhuzhul. Miomir uh, was uh, uh, Croatia's ambassador here to uh, the United States several years ago <coughs> and, uh, and, and vastly expanded Croatia's uh, friends here in Washington. Uh, he was one of those uh, important forces in, in helping to solidify uh, Croatia's uh, entry into the, the NATO alliance and, and, it, and its, uh, its integration into the alliance. Uh, he has, uh, then he, he, became head, uh, he became foreign minister of Croatia, and I was honored to be received by him in that wonderful country. And uh, he's been a great friend of the Institute. Uh, he has been doing government affairs consulting here for a number of years. He has also been the founder of the uh, International University in Dubrovnik. And, uh, and so I thought that he would be able, he has also helped the Institute establish deeper relations with uh, not only with Croatia, but with other nations in the region. And I thought it would be really most appropriate for him to make the introduction today. So, Mimir, please, uh, the floor is yours. Mr. Minister, Mr. Ambassador, I first want to thank to John for his friendship, uh, for a great role that he played in American politics, and uh, also great role in helping to many of us uh, from the former communist countries or uh, countries in transition, how we like to say. Uh, John was always open to advise and to support. Uh, an institute uh, was also very much open to provide a venue for uh, many of us to come here to say what we want to say, to know that we will have opportunity to talk with the serious people. Also, I'm happy that we had some students from Croatia. Uh, in that time, my young assistant, uh, uh, who became foreign minister of Croatia in one moment, was a student uh, here at the institute. Recently, there was a student from Montenegro, whose father was the mayor of uh, uh, Podgorica, Mr. Mogush, and who is now in, in the Montenegrin diplomacy. So there is a relation of the institute with the, with the region indeed. And I am particularly pleased today to be here uh, presenting the Minister of Defense of Montenegro, the, as it is said, the newest member of uh, NATO Alliance, and also a good personal friend of mine. And you know how time and history change. Only something like 20 years ago, this would be look as a possible mission that Croatian, former Croatian minister is a presenting a minister from Montenegro. But indeed, I am proud to say that uh, Croatia and Montenegro passed some difficult periods, uh, for first period living together in one uh, country, Yugoslavia, in different versions of that country, Yugoslavia, then uh, some difficult period in the 90s. But uh, if you want me to say and to point out, and I would be able to spend, uh, uh, I don't know how much time, in uh, explaining to you uh, the process of reconciliation, which is a difficult process, very difficult process, and it doesn't work, as we can see in different parts of the world. When you look into the example of Croatia and Montenegro, it is living proof that it can work. When people understand that there are much more things that put them together than, than what uh, uh, create the differences, and when they start to look into the future, 
they come <coughs> to the to the uh, position where they can build together that that future. And Croatia and Montenegro indeed did that. And a big part of that goes to Minister Bosković. First time when I met with him, I was a minister and he was deputy foreign minister of in that time, whatever remain of Yugoslavia. I even don't know what was the official name. Serbia and Montenegro. Union of Serbia. <laughs> so he was a, as a representative of Montenegro at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Belgrade, deputy uh, a minister, and the minister was the person who was not very very popular in Croatia, as you remember very well. Uk Drašković, who, for those of you who are following the history of that part of the world, rather known figure in the Serbian politics. So not easy for us to come, but uh, to open, but you know, uh, uh, you can never choose your neighbors, but you can choose the way how you live with your neighbors. And I am uh, very, very pleased that uh, uh, from that time on, Croatia is uh, building good relations, but that good is not proper statement when it comes to Montenegro, because the relations between Croatia and Montenegro are excellent. We are not just good neighbors and good friends, but really, indeed, partners. And now what makes me proud, because I always, as well as John, I truly and fully believe in the, in the role of NATO in Europe. I think that NATO is the institution to, that changed Europe. NATO is the institution that provided ground on which the, the European Union could be built. And uh, this morning, earlier in this morning, I, on another forum, I had a rather interesting exchange from, uh, with a woman from Sweden. And being from Sweden, she doesn't see what is the role of NATO in nowadays world. Maybe if we were from Sweden, we would think it's the same. But we are not from Sweden. Sweden, we are from the other part of the world that we can witness that NATO is bringing stability and, and security. And without security and stability, it's very difficult to imagine to have economic progress or any progress. So I'm very, very happy that NATO is uh, uh, the, uh, admitted Montenegro. I think that that was kind of a linking, linking piece of the territory. So now when you look at uh, the geographical area, so basically all Adriatic Sea is surrounded by NATO member countries, which makes security for all our uh, nations in totally, totally different uh, level. Al also, as a, as a fellow American, I think that that is very much in the interest of the United States. I, uh, and trying to convince and not to convince, to explain, to give uh, my <coughs> contribution to everyone uh, to say how it is important from a point of view of stability of Europe, but also point of view of United States interest. But uh, when I say interest, I don't mean any kind of narrow interest, but indeed interest of promoting uh, stability and prosperity of that part of the world. That will also, I think, uh, uh, another topic that John and I discuss, uh, and we have the same opinion about that, I think uh, there is a great initiative that, uh, uh, frankly speaking, was not launched during Trump administration, but it is fair to, stay, to say that it is uh, now promoted by President Trump himself and uh, the administration, that is that uh, so-called Three Cs initiative uh, that will bring totally new picture of uh, uh, energy in Europe and uh, strategic uh, positioning completely different than what it is uh, right now. And the Minister Boskovic is playing a crucial role in all, all of that. I, let, uh, I was glad to hear from him that he had a very, very successful visit with Secretary Matis. Uh, frankly, I didn't have any doubts that it would be like that, but I'm glad to hear that. Uh, and that uh, United States indeed is a uh, uh, looking and seeing uh, reliable and, uh, and, and uh, <coughs> very strong, uh, regardless of the size, partner in uh, Montenegro, the same way how they see it in Croatia. In <coughs> so without saying you anything uh, uh, more, I think uh, Minister Boskovic will be able to present it even more. As you could see from his bio, he, was, uh, he kept several positions at the cabinet level. He was also Minister of the Economy. Minister of Social Affairs. So basically, he is walking government by himself. <laughs> so, Eric, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and good afternoon to all of you. Uh, first, big thanks to the Institute, to 
bring me opportunity to discuss with you about some very interesting region and uh, especially from the point of view of security and stability, which is of concern of most of the uh, students who are doing the research is here in the institute, but also one big and special thanks to my friend Mimi who gave me opportunity to be part of today's event. Uh, I'm, I'll be f in two weeks 46 and uh, in the last 25 years of my life I changed four countries but living in the same city which is completely different what you get used to it. So <clears throat> I was living in Socialist Yugoslavia, I was living in Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, I was living in Serbian Montenegro, and finally, as it should be, in independent Montenegro. And most of that time we were living in the region called, right now it's very popular to hear that it's Western Balkan. It's the Western Balkan, which consists of few countries like Croatia, like Bosnia and Herzegovina, like Serbia, Montenegro, Kosovo, Macedonia, and Albania. Some of them would like to use to say that it's ex Yugoslavian countries plus Albania, but it's a region of Balkan. Is it Western or some other, but it's Balkan? And uh, I'm not so sure. Maybe few of you know what does it mean, Balkan, what literally uh, word Balkan means, of, if any of you know. It's a Turkish word towards Balkan, which means Bal is honey and Khan is blood, which is by itself describing very good how it looks to live on Balkan. At some point of time, it's so sweet so nice. We were together, we could live together without such a major province, but then comes blood, a lot of tension, a lot of casualties and a lot of destruction. So where we are now? Uh, I will just say a few words and I would like to, to today to listen and to discuss with you uh, what is of your own interest, but we'll use some very short period of time just to explain you how I look on it, or how we look from the Balkan, and or from some very small, the smallest part of the Balkan, like Montenegro is. Montenegro is the smallest country, and in next Yugoslavia it was the poorest republic. If you measure it with GDP per capita or wages or whatever. It was the poorest, mm -hmm. the poorest. And we had at that time Slovenia as the most developed by economy, then Croatia, then Serbia, then Bosnia Herzegovina, Macedonia, and Montenegro. Today is quite different situation thanks to different reasons. There was a lot of destructions in a lot of parts of ex Yugoslavia. And as my friend said, finally we come to the sense in my country that we should live together, not against each other. We made some mistakes through the past and paying the consequences even today, because if we didn't make those mistakes, for sure we would be today in European Union if we are not in this moment. So what we have in Balkan right now? We have Slovenia, who is a member of EU, member of NATO. We have Croatia, member of EU, member of NATO. We have uh, Montenegro, member of NATO, the, the candidate for the EU. We have Albania, who is also member of NATO, <coughs> not member of EU. We have Macedonia, Kosovo, Bosnia, and Serbia, who are not member of EU, either of uh, NATO. But even among, among those, we have differences because we have Macedonia, who would like to become a member of NATO and have a very strong public opinion in favor of it. And uh, probably Kosovo, who would like to become a member of NATO and even stronger uh, internal opinion regarding in favor of it. Then we have Serbia, who is who would like to promote uh, an allied uh, policy or something like, like that. Uh, 
who would like to join the EU, but not NATO for, for sure. Then we have Bosnia and Herzegovina internally divided uh, by different uh, constitutional uh, paths. One part would like to join NATO, the other part would not for sure join to NATO. So even from this description, you want to see how difficult region is from the point of let's say priorities when it comes to the foreign policy and when it comes to future integration policy in the region. Now I would like to present how I see the region of Western Balkan. The situation in Western Balkan is difficult. Right now we have a strong presence of uh, a military presence in <coughs> with almost 4.5 thousand soldiers from uh, 28 countries. Now, from the uh, second part of this year, Montenegro will participate and will be, as in NATO, 29 country who participates in, uh, in a K for mission. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, we have uh, preserved peace with the Dayton Agreement from 1995. It was Outstanding achievement in 99, December 1995 in the United States, but 22 years and a few months uh, after it, we can see that it's not something that uh, can provide a sustainable development of that country in any sense, economical, democratical, or something like that. So we need to change something. We need to find a way to change the things. If you want peace and stability in the region, for sure, the whole region needs to be integrated into North Atlantic Treaty Organization. That's for first. Because like that, that organization uh, will provide security and stability. But also, then, all together we can uh, at least agree upon some crucial things, which is NATO. But unfortunately, today's situation is quite different, right? Due to different reasons, due to historical reasons, due to different personal interests, due to different interests of the global political players, like uh, Russia, like China, like United States. And it, that situation is complicating uh, things on Balkan Peninsula. So after, let's say, after the war in 1995 in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, we had uh, tension in uh, Kosovo, then we had a uh, NATO campaign in uh, Serbia and Montenegro in 1999. And in 2001, we had a uh, uh, fight in between Macedonia and Albanians in, uh, in uh, Macedonia. So there is no adult living generation in region of ex Yugoslavia, who uh, knows how to live in a peacetime. So it's only 17 years for the last, after the last conflict in the region of, of Western Balkan. And we didn't learn our lessons. Still, there is a few potential uh, weak points <coughs> in, in the region of Western Balkan. So the situation, there is too many open questions, too many open challenges, too many uh, situations that can cause uh, a new destruction in the Western Balkan. So from, my, from our point of view, those who are uh, belonging to those who are making some decisions, who provide decisions, who provide uh, information and everything, uh, those open questions are strengthened with the influence of different global political players. So it's not just the mixture of interest within the Balkan Peninsula. It's a mixture of much wider interest. Now Russia is a strong global player. Should be admitted or not, but it looks like. They try to promote their interests very far from their own borders. And the Balkan is a piece of the land where they try so hard. They tried it 
in my own country. They even try to organize a coup. They try to assassinate former prime minister. They try to do the same in Macedonia after the elections in to December 2016. They are trying now hard in Serbia. They are trying in Republic of Srpska, actually Bosnia and Herzegovina, to Republic of Srpska. So they will not let it go because it's not that they want something for themselves because they are so far they don't have they cannot do it except they have traditional historical ties with the Balkans with the uh, Slavic nations from the Balkan but they want to oppose the United States and they want to make it life as much as possible difficult to the United States so they will try and they will keep trying unfortunately the the nations on the Balkan Peninsula are so divided. They don't want to unite and to fight against, against those kind of influence what Russia tries to do. So the future can be both. If we are clever enough to work together and to find common interest about, upon some things that we can uh, have together, if we cannot do that, then we will have a huge problem in our companies. So that's why we need a strong presence of the United States. We need a strong presence because the United States is the guarantor of peace and stability in the Balkan. And alone or through NATO, it doesn't matter, but it needs to be there because without the US <coughs> presence, without NATO presence in uh, uh, Western Balkan, I'm pretty sure the all open question will pop up and uh, the, 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 the destructions would occur again. So this is the actual situation. I know it looks so pessimist pessimistic for my, uh, if you uh, listen to me, but there is a uh, bright light on the, at the end of the tunnel. First of all, if he could succeed to find a way to make our reforms, which were very, very hard, I'm pretty sure those can do it as well. I told you at the beginning that we were the poorest. Now, right now we are, after Slovenia and Croatia, the most developed by all the, let's say, indicators that we can provide from the economy, from the democracy point of view, or anything. So I'm pretty sure with the right strategy, we can include Macedonia very soon, if we invert it, maybe not NATO, and then work hard with Serbia, Bosnia, Kosovo to do it the same way. And when we finish that process of integration of Balkan Peninsula, firstly into NATO, then to European Union, then we can say that our job is done and that peace and stability can be granted uh, now even for a longer period of time. Because the longest period of peace in the Balkan Peninsula was the peace from the Second World War until 1989. Everything before and after were wars, conflicts and destruction. So only if we are together and we are integrated in a bigger organization like NATO is and then European Union, then peace and stability can be done in, in our countries. This is all for me for the beginning. I'm really open for a question and I really would like to hear from you and to see what maybe from Balkan we are missing that you can see from here from a side and to find something together.